Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with some good old Nuzlocke in Pokemon's over Nuzlocke. Uh, I was gonna fly out of here until I realized <laughs> we don't have Valley in the team. So we're gonna go get Valley and then we're gonna go continue the story. As you remember, uh, our current plan, my current plan, is get Dom super buff, super, super powerful. Uh, and then he's going to wrestle a dragon to death. Specifically Kindra. Because unfortunately, because Kindra is water dragon, sh all the regular ways we would take him down, way to get a water type, is just not effective. So the only thing in this game that can actually take down a water dragon type is another dragon. And, uh, Doc died. So, we're gonna have to just move on. Alright. Wow. Let's fly. Straight to Mahogany Town. And we'll probably catch some new Pokemon in this one. Alright, let's... Let's do it. Oh, man. It's still hot, by the way. I hate the heat. Can't take it. What kind of berry is this? Burp berry. Oh, my pack is full? Hello, sir. I'm gonna win for sure. Bold of you to de declare, but I'll beat you down regardless. Oh, you're a psychic type. Great. Psychic Phil. <laughs> Hello, Psychic Phil. Not cool. Not too is literally the worst Pokemon for um, Dom to fight. Oh, I can send out Nightmare. I forgot. Nightmare is a psychic type. But it's also got another very important part that can easily take down any other psychic type. Its other type is Headbutt. And it takes down Headbutt in like no one's business. I should give him the pink shades, now that I think about the pink scarf. Because really all he does is um, use Headbutt on every single um, opponent. Alright, good job, Nightmare. Not too shabby. Oh, Jolene still has the XP share. I'm going to have to take that off of her. Kadabra! Uh-oh. This might be bad. No, it wasn't. Headbutt! Dude, none of your moves are gonna hurt Nightmare. He is your literal weakness. He is basically the jock of psychic types because all <laughs> his best move is currently the ability to hit shit with his head. The Nightmare Jock. Oh, that's terrifying to think about. You can't do anything. Because Nightmare is literally going to... He's got your number written on the ticket, sir. Yeah, yeah. 400, baby. It is funny that um, the first opponent... Psychic Phil. That's a shocking loss. Bet you didn't see that shit coming. Alright, let's go back. Okay, so heal up. And then we'll get that... Well, first of all, we have to give... Um, Pokemon some new items to make room, I suppose. I suppose. As was a style at the time. Okay. Let's see. So first of all, we got Pink Bow. Nightmare. Miracle Seed. I'm gonna give my seed to Jolene. There you go. She made it hold it. Why am I making it seem like I'm forcing Jolene against it? Jolene will gladly accept my Miracle Seed. I gave you a bitter berry, that's right. It was during my peak anger at everything. I'm gonna give you Amulet Coin next. And Quick Claw, we gotta give this back to our boy Kid Fisto. That's his weapon. All right, I think we should be good from here. Oh man, all right, let's continue on, moving on. Okay. Give me, give me, give me Burkberry, please. I need it. I need it in my life. Okay, let's see. Tiny water path. Hello, sir. I fish a I can't no more. I battle till I drop. That's my relationship with my Pokemons. Okay. <sighs> I forgot about the bum fighting Fisher, Edgar. Did you know Remoraid was based off a gun? 
And he looks gunnish in this specific photo, by the way. Photo. This sprite. Like, I think he was supposed to be like a Remington Steel or something. But the idea of someone at the Pokemon Company, one, looking at a gun and saying, what if we made this a fish, is extremely hilarious to me. Like, his mouth is even open, like you're ready to, like, fucking open brat brat all over. Alright, Dom. That reminds me, speaking of fish, I wanted to talk about this because I learned about it just recently. And by recently, I mean literally hours ago. So I don't know if you... Are you familiar with um, California? But in Los Angeles, we have a we had a music store called Amoeba Music. Um, there's two locations: one on Sunset Boulevard, which was, I believe, the first location, and then the other one was located on is located on Hollywood, somewhere in Hollywood. I don't remember exactly where. Um, oh, how dare you use the nightmare tactic on me? I have to have an awakening in my bag, so I'm gonna use it. Yeah, let me see. Really? We got like 27 different ways to heal someone, but we don't got no other way to do anything else. Okay. That's bad, but it's a Butterfree, so it shouldn't really hurt Dom. Never mind. I forgot. Butterfrees are freaking crazy. Anyway, Amoeba Music. Uh, because of the coronavirus, the Amoeba Music people have been kind of asking, basically they had to start a GoFundMe. Because if you don't know what Amoeba Music is, Amoeba Music was one of these places, which is funny because as time went on, it's, I guess the concept of this, this kind of stuff just doesn't exist anymore, but it was like a record store, um, where you could actually buy like legit CDs and, re CDs and records. Um, also movies, like you could go to them and you could sell them basically physical media and if you wanted to buy physical media you would go there um it was a really cool place my friend of mine when i went to school in los angeles oh blossom hello can use confusion on you you only know absorb so you're not a threat never mind you do have that forgot about that move apparently you also don't take many much damage what the fuck are you powering up solar beam Oh, Nightmare, you gotta kill this bitch right now. You guys, I don't, I don't think we have a Pokemon that can take Solar Beam. What level are you, 25? Nightmare, can you take a Solar Beam? Can you look me in the eye and tell me you can take a Solar Beam? First of all, I'm gonna use a Paralysis Cure. Okay. Okay. I trust you. I trust you, Nightmare. You can take this solar beam. Okay. Whew. Headbutt. <laughs> Good job. Anyway, back to the story that I was about to say. Um, it's funny that someone tried to use sunlight to take down Nightmare and it didn't work. Um, you're a pretty cool trainer, though, girl. Can I get your number? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, damn it. She just wanted to talk about her. I hate girls like that. I'm a person too, ma'am. I'm just not a hunk of meat. Anyway, Amoeba Music. It was one of the last places you could kind of get physical media in a really cool place too because it was like, first floor was all the music stuff. Um, I think if I remember correctly, the one in Sunset Boulevard had like vinyl records for old um, albums. Like going back to, <laughs> to Beatles stuff, which I guess to me is super old. Um, just to give context, when I was born, the idea of CDs was a brand new hip thing. And now somehow CDs are obsolete and vinyl is still around because of quality of music and stuff like that. Anyway, back to what I was saying. It was, it's a very well-known location. If you've ever seen, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the brand new, uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, uh, you could act, the, 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 the dome... The, the the cool the cool I think it was called the Coolorama something like that. That theater is right next to the Amoeba now. Um, and by right now I mean the Amoeba opened up right next to it. So um, 
it was a cool place because it was like, whoa, there's this kick-ass Cineplex right here. There's an amoeba that has all the cool shit inside of it. And then there's a Jack in the Box. And that Jack in the Box was pretty freaking sweet, if I had to say so myself. Um, so for me, when my friend took me there, because um, I used to go to school in L.A., and he grew up in L.A. and I didn't. So he would kind of show me around places during, either sometimes during class and sometimes after class, depending on whatever uh, kind of situation I could get my me and my weird friends into. Um, whatever weird kind of time we had, sometimes I would show up to school super early and while waiting for class, he would like take me there and be like, all right, here, check this shit out. And I'll be like, whoa, this is awesome. Um, so it's because of the Corona stuff, it's closing down. And it's not in a way that's like, we're closing and then we're going to reopen. It's just going to be gone. And I was like, it sucked because I really did like that place. It, like, I never in my back of my mind did I think, like, oh, they were going to be going for some tough times. And to be fair to that amoeba, it sounded like they were already planning on getting rid of it. But now it seems like they're not going to have, like, a big fan fan farewell for it, which is a damn shame because it certainly deserved it. Um, the same friend who introduced, who, like, took me there is also where, that's also where he got to meet Quentin Tarantino as well. He got to talk to him. He got him to sign his um, Planet Terror DVD box set. Um, not Planet Terror. What is that called? Grindhouse. There you go. Grindhouse is what the compilation is called, but inside Grindhouse is... Death Proof and uh, Planet Terror, two fantastic movies. Even though I think um, Death Proof kind of sucks, uh, except for Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell is awesome in that movie. I love. Oh god, he's so good in that movie. He almost makes that movie worth it because of how good he is. That's what I have to say about that specific movie. Is I don't think that movie's very good, but it's worth it for every single part where Kurt Russell's in the screen and for the ending, for the ending chase scene. But I always thought, like, when they were showing them together, that it was kind of... Because Planet Terror is straight up a Grindhouse movie, and then Quentin Tarantino just made a good movie. And I was like, that's not... That was not the agreement when you guys agreed to do... Whatever. Like, they're friends, obviously, so who am I to fucking get between them and say, like, one of you clearly did not actually follow the letter of Grindhouse. But also, I think, um, the specific Grindhouse movie he was making, which is one about cars... Uh, it just doesn't interest me because I don't give a fuck about cars. I can give two shits about what a car does besides driving people here and there. Uh, but yeah, that Amoeba music is shutting down. It's a damn shame because I have a lot of good memories going there with my friends. And it's not like I was there recently or anything, which is a shame because now I kind of wish I was. Um, but it's really hard to explain how cool this place was. Like, there was like... Um, there was, like, VHS copies of Mystery Science Theater 3000, and there was the good shit, too. Like, the, the things you can't find anymore. Hello, Seeking. Um, episodes of stuff like, uh... I'll switch to Nightmare. Stuff like uh, Get Godzilla vs. Megalon, which can never be redistributed because, if I remember correctly, they the Godzilla rights for movies... Back then, it's not like it is now where everyone kind of understands who has the rights to Godzilla. Um, back then, the people who they thought had the Godzilla rights to the movie, they thought that Mystery Science Theater 3000 thought that they were getting the right, like, the rights to, like, make fun of the movie was coming from them, but it turned out, like, they didn't have the rights. They were just saying they did. So it ended up being that <laughs> that episode can never re-air and it can't be actually, I think, legitimately bought because... Hey, they weren't allowed to make all those Godzilla episodes, which is a damn shame because all those Godzilla episodes are fucking funny. Um, if you ever get a chance to find them, it's super hard to find a copy of it. Uh, but they had specifically those VHSs because, like, the Amoeba was about, like, oh, you brought it in and then you bought it and then you sold it. And you could find stuff like that. And then there was stuff like, uh, what's like a, a good, really cool thing? VHS copies of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> that totally was there. I mean, specifically older anime as well, but um, when I was there, I was like, holy shit, they have the VHS copy where um, Piccolo fought Cell. That's cool. And then my friend's like, are you going to buy that? And I was like, no, because I don't have VHS. But I might buy this DVD of this really f weird movie that um, not a, play a lot of places sell because it's like not something you would 
buy, I guess, is the nicest way of saying it. If I remember correctly, too, there was also a buttload of porn. And I debated on buying some of that porn, because it looked like really good stuff. There was also hentai, um, depending on what you're into. Whatever kind of flavor of uh, thing you're whack it to, I guess you're into. I'm gonna fight this guy for last. Do you know about the legendary bird? But yeah, it's leaving, and that kind of sucks. Um... Oh, really? Is everything here just bad for Dom? Droll! But it's okay, I think we can take out Kid Fisto then. Whip out the Fisto, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it kind of sucks. It sucks that to hear that, that one day we're already planning on closing it down. Um, and I don't know, man. Places like that should exist, and it seemed like the reason that they were shutting it down was like some shitty reason, like... There, there's a bunch of condos or something being built around there, and it's like... Uh, for, like, super rich-ass people, which I feel like kind of defeats the whole vibe of L.A. I guess it's for the most part. When I think of L.A., I don't think about rich people. What I think about is the people who actually go there day-to-day. -day. Like, the man who I saw... One, one time, this is another story related to... Um, uh, when I was, like, going to school in L.A., my friend would take me around L.A., and we stopped by a McDonald's, and there was a man with, like, a blow-up doll. Uh, and he was a goth man, and he had a, a blow-up doll, and then I was like, dude, is he just wearing, is he just bringing that blow-up doll with him? He's like, yeah, he does that. And he's, like, some kind of street performer. And I was like, okay. And then, as we were talking, like, an older lady's like, I've seen that gentleman around. I'm pretty sure he fucks that thing out in public. And at that point, like, I was like, he fucks it? And she's like, yeah, he, like, full-on, like, does crazy things to it out in the streets. And I guess it's performance art or something. And I was like, are you sure he's just not fucking weird? Because there's a difference between performance art and being just a fucking weirdo. And at this point, I think the guy had realized that, um someone was talking about him so i got away from the old lady because i was like listen dude she was the one who's talking shit about you and your plastic girlfriend um so you why don't you go <laughs> talk to her about it uh and i think she ended up having a screaming contest with that man like later but we left because that guy was given daggers and i was like i'm not about to die at this mcdonald's because this man because we insulted his plastic girlfriend so i'm just gonna leave and with that everyone that's the end of today's episode i hope you like it tomorrow we'll actually start going through the cave and hopefully catch an ice type and see if that can help us out. I don't think it will help much against Kendra, but you never know. Alright everyone, until next time. Bye.